So we have another bank holiday weekend coming up. Perfect time to do a little bit of modeling and what better time to launch the spring bank holiday promo. There's something for everyone here, isn't there? There's all different scales and all different products. Got all sorts. There's pretty much something for everyone. We've got steam locomotives here. We've got uh, electric, diesel and die cast scenic items. Everything you need to get cracking on your layout, really. Well, let's get them out and take a closer look. Let's have a look. Right, so we'll kick it off with something for all you Engage fans out there. So we've got Graham Farish's lovely little Class 66. And this one uh, represents 66779 in British Rail Green, but uh, with GBRF branding. So this reflects um, Evening Star um, and is a, a sort of a homage to British Rail's last ever steam locomotive. And it's a, it's a fantastic little model, this, isn't it? It really is. It's got full digital capacity for the DCC guys out there. It's got directional lighting front and rear. And it comes in at 8950 as well as part of this promotion. Really so great it's Very a great, great way to get a heavy freight locomotive in N-Gage. And this is a real celebrity as well. It's been seen all over the UK. And with it being painted in that heritage livery, a lot of people do chase it with cameras and video footage. So... You can see it out there on the internet, you can see it in real life, and potentially see it on your layout. Just something a little bit different, isn't it? And it's got quite a bit of heft, that really, for an engage but one, it's great. Not everyone's into the diesels, are they, really? No. You know, and we've got to look at the, the steam guys, too. And we can keep the same colour, because we've got BR Green Steam, too. So, nice little, nice little bonus there. And this is the 15 guinea train pack from Hornby. Oh, very nice. So this is the loco and the free coaches you see here. This represents the 1968 15 Guinea Special. This was the final official steam hauled service on British Railways on the 11th of August 1968. So this is just over 50 years ago now, and it's a commemorative pack of that special day. And that started off running basically down the road from here, didn't it? In uh, Liverpool Lime Street, headed on up to over the Settle and Carlisle, and then all around, all around the northwest. So it was quite a service and something that you can recreate on quite a lot of layouts really that's it and you've got it ready to go there as well you can expand it with further coaches should you need to but the main core of the set is available there and that's 195 pounds that's for a, for a loco super detailed Hornby's Britannia models Fantastic. just looking at here Pretty the detailed. amount of separately fitted parts like these ladders the handrails and, and the coal is it, it's a very nice effect in there not to, you, you, it's not something you'd really have to modify too much to get a great effect and the cab detail in there it's really something to behold this model and for that price it's a great way to get started with a full train for your layout shall we stick with green steam let's do it so look, it's got helgen's linton and barnstable uh tank lo locomotive against the 262 and um i i think everyone knows that i love my narrow gauge stuff <laughs> so this is just i I've, i think i'm gonna have to get my hands on one of these for the price so what are we talking for this day 134.50 they're Amazing. down from 189.95, so quite a bit of a saving on those as well. It's one thing that always surprised me with this is just the the weight, and it's having these diecast tanks and such a really firm body shell. It's it, it it makes a massive difference to the running cap capabilities this loco, and you've got the full cab detail in there with loads of separately fitted parts going on, and it's. It's a lovely little runner. It walks to walk and talks to talk, doesn't it, yes, really? Yes, absolutely. And again, these are something that's really out there in the real railway world at the moment with the restoration of the Linton and Barnstable Railway. There's one replica loco that's been made and there's quite a few more that they're going at now. So the Linton and Barnstable's really going to, getting a rebirth at the moment that's in it. real life. So if you wanted to create the historical side, the loco is good for you. If you wanted to create the, the present and the future as well, the loco is for you. So if you're into your narrow gauge modelling, as you are, it's, it's really one to take a look at. And the narrow gauge scene is really expanding now, isn't it? So there's plenty to come. So if you start off with one loco, there's going to be a lot coming in the future and more wagons and more stuff to do. So it's a, it's a great uh, part of the hobby to, to take the leap into. So you said before about expanding these. We've, we've included got, that as well, haven't we? We've got the perfect <laughs> product. So... If free coaches isn't enough for you, or you've got other rakes that you want your coaches to be in, we've got some more Hornby Mark 1s in VR Maroon available. These, thousands and thousands of these on Britain's railways throughout the 1960s. These were the standard coach of the time. You could see them everywhere, from the top of Scotland to Penzance, and pretty much every corner of the rail network in between. And 
they're a really nice model as well. They're and fantastic. For me, the BR Maroon is what is British Railways. Yeah. It's that steam era, it's the transition into diesels. This is the moment where so much happens on British Rail. And really, what can't you roll with a, with a Maroon model? <laughs> Come is, on. It's a challenge <laughs> to go for. I mean, anyone who's modeling the 1960s will have one of these on the layout. I'd, I'd love to see someone who doesn't, and no doubt I'll get a lot of comments in the video now with people <laughs> who don't, but I'll look forward to those. But these are really nice model, full under frame detail as well. Detailing's all in there. But um, even for the later modelers, you know, you still see the, the pretty much everywhere on pre uh, preservation lines and they're even out on the real railway. Obviously not quite in the exact same livery as they were back then, but you can have a, you can have a little bit of, uh, this you know, is it. rule one comes into play. And, and for <laughs> 18 pounds a piece as well, it's easy to build up a big rate, whether you're having a couple of coaches on a branch line service or you've got a full express or even putting more on the front of Oliver Cromwell there, really. So <laughs> there's, there's thousands of opportunities to use these. So how much have we got these for then, though? They're 18 apiece. <laughs> Can't be routed for that price. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the final one for this? Lot? We are looking at some accessories now, and no layout's complete without these, really. As Thanks. much as the locos and the coaches are the fun part, and you see what's moving, you've got to have a bit of scenery for them to pass through. They've got to run past the station building or through a landscape. So we've put some scenic items on there as well. For those of you who just have a little gap on your layout, you're not quite sure what to put in it, here's some options. Got this lovely little resin. Is this like a waiting office for, for your station area? And then we've got like a gamekeeper's hut here. So there's some, just, it's these little details that really bring a layout to life, isn't it? So, you know, it's it, it's not always about your, your grand, huge station buildings and your cavernous mountainsides and things like that. It's, it, it's all about the little things sometimes. And these really, make a fantastic scene. It is, and we've got the station building at eight pounds as well. So whether people are looking at putting a new station on the layout, a whole new layout, or just expanding what they've expanding what they've already got, it's a great opportunity to get going really. Maybe that first step and a lot of buildings like that can be used for many different purposes as well. So it might have taken your eye but not on a station. You might have a perfect mill scene or a town scene that's just found a new building in there for you. And the beauty of these is there's not really much you need to do. There's no kit work to do and they're fully painted and they've got a, a nice almost a little bit of weathering effect on there as well. So there isn't really too much you need to do. It's just sort of plug and play on your layout in a sense. <laughs> that's it. And the hardest bit's open in the box. That's it. Okay, right. Let's get some more products on the table for round two. I'm excited now. So, where do we start here? It's, it's got to be the lightning. It has to be. It's dominating the table, this thing, isn't it? This is a 148 <laughs> scale model. I mean, look at the size of the box. We can't get it in the <laughs> shop. We can't get it on the table. <laughs> so, and these are the sort of Cold War air icon from, from Britain, really. They yeah. were introduced in the early 1960s. This particular model is one that operated out of Singapore in the late 1960s for the RAF Far East di Division. Okay. Get me words right. <laughs> and it's it's exquisite really i mean it's it's the biggest thing we've got on the table here at the moment well just um, getting out of the box the sheer weight of it is unbelievable it's all it's practically all metal construction isn't it you've got a few sort of plastic parts on the wings but it's a it's it's practically as heavy as the real thing isn't it, it is and <laughs> i mean corgi's really well known for the aircraft oh, as well the you know the quality of the printing quality of the two and etc and they always come with a display stand for the aviation archives so you can either have it on display or if you've got a a, a layout set up for this can we call it a layout with planes I presume we can <laughs> you you've really got the opportunity for this and it's it's 85 pounds for for that for that yeah you know? it's, a, it's a lot of bang for your buck isn't it and it is a limited edition as well so you do get the little limited edition certificate so you just get that in there as well it's a nice little bonus to include there isn't it so where do we go that's from a here? big thing out of the way isn't it so <laughs> i don't really here? know what to mention next let's take a look at these coaches so we've got backman's um mark 2f aircon coaches here haven't we yes um and these are the dc models aren't they so that's fitted fully fitted with digital and uh, lighting yep and these are really quite something aren't they there's a lot of weight and really rigid body shell to this i feel it's a fantastic runner isn't it this is a coach for the more modern modeler really we had the mark ones just before but these are the mark twos these are some of the natural sort of progression so perfect for anyone in the 70s and the 80s and the details fully there the one of the first coaches out there as you said that's got full controllable digital lighting in there and they've got separate tail lamps as well if you want to put those on there 
Did the Rolls Royce of double or gauge really coaches? Are. Yeah, just so, taking one look at it, the printing on there and all the separately fitted parts on the gangways and on the yeah. roof there, and your um, full interior detail with the chairs and tables. And how much are they coming in at? Uh, they're fifty two pounds. Fifty two a piece. So that's a yeah. great saving on the RRP for these, and as you say, they're a premium coach, so um, that's you know a, a great price for your layout. So I think it's humble wagons. Then not everyone wants to transport passengers. And we've included this particular vehicle from the Dapar range, which is a representation of a frame wagon used for departmental duties pretty much across every operator in the UK, yeah. really in the steam era. And this is the sort of wagon that everyone's got a place for. Yeah. You know, pl if, you've, if you've not got a place for a plank wagon, you've not got a layout really. <laughs> and Dapar's model just includes quite a lot of really good details to the price. You've got things like your metal wheels, your NEM couplings in there. You've got a representation of the coal load, but you can take that out for the real thing if you want to. And it's just another good thing to have if you want to fill a corner of your layout, if you want to expand one of your freight rates. There's, there's, like say, there's so to... much you could do on these. It's, it, there's not really an excuse not to have one on your layout. And, and it's it's in there at a pocket money price as well, isn't it? What what have we got that coming in at? We've got that. I'm going to have to consult our, our list here. Consult but we've the got guide. Those for £7.50. £7.50. So it's coming in at a pretty pretty decent rate as yeah. well there. So Again, think, can't be without one for that price, really. That's it. It's something to just chuck on the layout. So. I mean, the thing is, though, all this rolling stock... Got to talk about locos. We've got to talk about things that actually pull them now. You know, Let's it's just it. just sat around doing nothing. So, so it's we're the Janus, on to the, isn't it? We're on to the Janus. And these have been really popular, haven't they? We've had quite a few uh, different versions of these coming through. And um, what's what? Was, so this is in the Port of London Authority livery. So it's something quite a bit of a unique one there, isn't it? It's not something you usually see. It is, but it's quite common with a lot of those industrial site liveries, so it would really suit anything like a steelworks or a national coal board mine. A lot of those industrial liveries, the branding on them really got quite small. I mean, you can see here it's literally on the plate I on the really side of the logo. I really to see that, didn't I? <laughs> so even if you don't have a model of the London dockyards, you can still make a home for this. I mean, these Janices, there were hundreds of them built throughout yeah. the 50s and the 60s. These were one of the main industrial shunters out there. So and they found a way all over the place, really, didn't they? And I'm I'm not gonna lie, I love shunting on a layout. I can't really sit and watch trains go around and round. You've I'm, gotta be doing it. It's gotta be backwards and forwards, <laughs> it's gotta have a purpose. So for me, actually having a loco that can do that and the motor and it's fantastic as well. It's got a flywheel in there to make sure that no part of your track really goes well doesn't have an issue on it that's it to be honest with and these you. are geared for low speed running aren't they so it's yeah. really perfect for they that are. level of operation on your layout we've also got them at a bargain price as well haven't we right do you want to consult the guide again i'm gonna have to have another look <laughs> we have got those for 72 pounds 72 i mean it's for for a fully working for what you get like and the, the level up uh, i'll pick it up again because i want to have another look <laughs> but the level of detail on these with the very uh, what something i've pointed out before i always like a rigid handrail yeah, I, I know, I know where you're coming it, from there. It's one thing that really spoils the look of something is when you've got a, a bit of wire that's really bowed or something. It just it, it just spoils the look, and this has got plenty of detail, and the cab detail's lovely as well. We'll have to remember this here, guys. It's um, narrow-gauge locomotives, rigid handrails. Rigid handrails. Actually, well, we're on some of your favourites. We've got paces here, Jack. I know they, I know I know. they I'm do getting a bit. I'm you. getting notorious about this, aren't <laughs> I, with my pacer fandom, but I just... What can I say? It's just I've always been a fan of these things, and this is the best time to pick up a model of it really it's, it's, it's Dapol's engaged model and again it's got the full suite of features in there it's got directional lighting it's got head codes in there this one's in the Arriva Trains Wales livery which they've carried for quite a few years now but you can still see them in this livery in well pretty much all across Wales that's it and um, with, the, with them well they apparently about to be uh, uh, withdrawn within the next year or so but who knows? Really. There are, These are still going to be seen for quite some time, I think, yeah. in this livery. So it's something that's relevant for quite a wide sphere of layouts. They're an absolute Marmite train, really, aren't they? A lot of people love them, such as yourself, and a lot of people really don't like them, probably more like me. But <laughs> at the same time, they're a part of railway history. You can't get out there without seeing them now. So whether you like them or don't like them, they've got a place on any engaged layout. That's it. For a realistic scene from that area in this era, you kind of can't not have one really. It's it, They're infamous, but it's uh, it's something that's got to be reflected. This is it. And last but not least, 
Got a pocket money bargain here. Pocket bond money bargain. <laughs> if you like the joke, you did there. Did and this is an Austin A30 van from the 1950s and 1960s in a county fire service fire patrol. So this is before you had fire engines going everywhere, that sort of thing. It was more checking out, making sure things are okay. Yeah, like a little patrol van, isn't and it? And what layouts don't need cars on them? As much as the railways are important, the roads are as important as well. You've got to help create a scene there. And I mean, this is one pound fifty. It's it's a daft price to it's just silly, help really. populate it's your layout. Silly, really. It's one pound fifty to help populate your layout for that price. And it's outside this promotion, but we have got a lot of vehicles that sort of one pound fifty, two pound as well. So do take a look if this particular one doesn't take your fancy. But just to even any reason populating a car park just having a little cameo scene but even things like if you've got a modern layout the classic car scene is so huge now that you know there's no excuse to not have like a meet up in a car park or some sort of heritage event or something like that so and there's I, loads of opportunities as we said with the buildings before it's a case of opening the box and putting it on your layout and that takes 30 seconds that's it one pound 50 and 30 seconds of model and it's it's cheap it's quick it's it's and it's easy. something that makes a nice little scene. It's pretty irresistible. Yeah. We're on to the tail end now, really, aren't we? We've got our last few bargains here. So, um, what do you want to talk about first? Well, not one, but two double gauge Grizzly Pacifics. It's hard to resist them with the gloss finish on, isn't it? Yeah, really? it's really quite something. And this finish. is a model of both an A1 and an A3 locomotive. So, same type as the Flying Scotsman. And they're both in LNER Apple Green livery. Again, with the gloss finish on them, really sets them off. And they're part of the limited edition Gresley collection too, so they are only a certain number of these made. Yeah. As well. So it's a nice little exclusive model and it's perfect for both display and running on your layout really, because it's still got the full running capability, but it's got that distinctive style with the gloss finish. This is it. And we've got those for £99 each at the wow. moment. That's a that's a full express locomotive with a gloss finish, limited edition for under 100 quid. <laughs> what more can you ask for, really? So it really does work out well for any LNER modeler, or as you said, anyone who just fancies having a pristine gloss logo in their collection. Just a nice little display item there, isn't it? So obviously we've got uh, them as a group. Now we'll move on to these guys. So we've got some more die cast here. These are um, got a Corgi Trackside Scammel Scarab flatbed and another flatbed, but in the uh, Pocket Bond Classics range again. And this is a British Railways uh, Gen Tug. Um, and these are just like you said before it's just something to add a little extra dimension to your layout isn't it just add that extra yeah layer this is realism. this is more of the commercial side of it so it wasn't just the railways that moved goods around the country right up until the end of sort of the 50s and the 60s and even to the current day british rail all the big four companies etc had their own road units things like scammel scarabs as we've got here that really just finished the job so to speak yeah they the railways took the freight to these vehicles, these vehicles took it to the individual factories, buildings, houses, etc. So it's all part of a massive sort of. You can represent that full supply chain, then, can't you? That's yeah. it. It's a huge ecosystem there, and it's something that shouldn't really be forgotten about. They but they played their part as much as the railways this did. Is, so it's this important. Is absolutely, yeah. Factor of the layout and like you, like your dodgy joke before. These are pocket money prices again. These aren't. That's they? absolutely so, it. I'll need to consult the guide again. I'm afraid. I think should. these are three three to four pounds. I got these. Yes, for, yes, it? that's yeah, exactly so what we've got those for there. Got some really great prices on these again. So sticking with the whole group idea again, we're moving on to the big guns now. So we've got some great OGA trade stock bargains here, haven't we? We have. The 2950 for the VAAs wow. and 36 for the HAAs. And I mean, OGA is a massively growing market at the moment. There's a lot of models coming out for it. For steam modelers, diesel modelers, pretty much every modeler, to be quite honest. Pretty much, you. yeah. And the quality of the models coming through as well is just really, really it's good. I mean. You can see from the HAA there. Now they're used for transporting coal between collieries and power stations right up until a couple of years ago from the 1960s. So perfect for anyone with any diesel. Yeah. And the thing I like about O gauge is you've got the fully working couplings on there as well. You've got what's called the instant coupling on the HAA and you've got the screw link coupling on the VAA, which was used more for transporting sort of palletized freight and yeah. that sort of thing. And that's in the EWS livery, so it brings it right up into the 21st century Like as well. you were saying with the couplings as well, it just adds that extra layer of kind of realism to your operations on the layout, because you've got the full, you know, actually going through and coupling all the wagons up and stuff like that. It just adds a bit of extra play factor in a way, doesn't it? The good thing about O-Gage as well is 
with vehicles like this, if you're having a small shunting layout, you don't really need much more space than, than what we've got here. That's it. Really, you know, if, you, if you're having a small shunting loco, a couple of wagons, you can still do it in a really achievable space. If you want to get into O-Gage, it's a really great way to get started, isn't it? You've got your almost, a, well, I'd, I'd like to say shelf layout, but it's a pretty big shelf. But, you know, there's, there's space that you can fit it in quite easily. And like you say, get a couple of wagons on the go, get a a daffle class 08 or something like that and you're good to go and it's this you know it. the prices are coming down every day so it's a good Absolutely. time to get into it so last but not least it's we've got another little lovely double o um locomotive here and this is the daffle class 73 um electro diesel i love these <laughs> I, 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 just, I, I love the weird factor or something it's you know having the third rail and diesel in one it's basically the genesis of the the buy it's, mode it's, isn't it <laughs> it's the multi-purpose loco these were built to haul sort of freight and passenger duties across the southern region but they had a small english electric power unit in there as well yeah. so they could shunt around yards and rescue things if the power went off so to speak but in real life these are suddenly getting a sort of a rebirth over the last oh, 10 absolutely. 15 years or so a lot of operators are re realizing the versatility they've got such as first gbrf you see here and a lot of them are being rebuilt but a lot of them are still remaining in the original form too so they're not just a southern local anymore they've gone right to the top of scotland they've gone one went to penzance i believe recently wow. <laughs> so they are all over the place and the model sort of is just as good as the real thing. It really is. There's a yeah. heck of a lot of detail on there. I mean, the underframe detailing is absolutely exquisite with all the air cylinders and everything on there. You've got your grills on the side and you've got the representation of the equipment behind there as well. You've got on the ends, you've got all the multiple working cables and stuff on, on this particular model and uh, full cab, cab detail as well. So it's a, it's a really lovely little thing. And I mean, let's be honest as well. It's going to stand out on any layout. It's, oh, yeah. It's purple, you know, it's, <laughs> it's bright purple. It's going to stand out anywhere. So if if your collection's looking a bit dull and needs a bit of something in there, it's it's gonna bring a bit of light to any any layout, isn't oh, it? Oh absolutely. Really? And like you say, there isn't really much of an excuse to not run one of these. That's what I find most interesting about them is the fact that they were built for well, not a niche purpose, but a very particular purpose, weren't they? And now they're everywhere. And the absolute best thing is half price half price more than half price whoa they were 140 to start off with we've gone for 69 i think i'm gonna have to get one for that price <laughs> <laughs> so that was a little bit of everything that we've got including the sale isn't it so we've we've got 22 different 22 items available altogether. yeah so there's plenty to explore as, as you've seen over double o n and o gauge so if you head over to hatton.co.uk onto the front page of the site you can explore all this stuff and um, make your purchase it is only while stocks last as well so if there's anything that's taking your fancy do get on there and grab it while it's still available i remember to let us know what your favorite item was in the comments and leave a like and hit subscribe and we'll see you again soon see you next time